Um, so we, we put our heads together and we start talking about this thing and, and we pull together these two hypotheses. There's, there's, the supply chain makes no sense and there's no consumer brand in the space. So what can we do to fix that? So flowers is a weird category. Um, it used to be that almost all the flowers sold in the US were grown here in California. Um, but decades ago, it all shifted to Ecuador and Colombia. So 90% of flowers that you buy in the US are sold out of one of those two countries. And the reasons are pretty basic. It's cheaper land and cheaper labor. But more important, it's very consistent temperature. They're literally on the equator, and so the temperature is always the same. And you can choose your temperature via altitude. And both Ecuador and Colombia have a lot of mountains, and in, our, in Ecuador's case, a lot of volcanoes. So at the top of the volcano, it's always winter. At the bottom, it's always summer, and in between are spring and fall. And so what flower farmers did was they said, hey, I always want spring. Great, I'll plant my spring flowers at 7,000 feet above sea level. I'll plant my roses at 10,000 feet above sea level, my summer flowers at the base. And that way, I trick the flower into thinking that it's always in season, which means I only plant it once. I don't have to keep churning and burning on the ground. And in California, what happens is we are, we're relatively temperate, but it's still a lot of, a lot of swing. Right? So all the flowers production moves down there, about 90%. So then you need a way to get the flowers from there to the consumer. So what happens is those farmers, I'm like getting, I'm, I'm starting to feel like I should do this, right? Um, all those farmers have to sell the flowers somehow in the US. And so they have friends and family in Miami and they say, hey, I'll buy your flowers from you and then I'll resell them. So they sell them to these importers in Miami. Those importers then sell them to wholesalers who move them around the country. The wholesalers then sell them to local florists and the local florists get their orders from 1-800-Flowers and FTD. This means you have five different entities all sharing in the product, meaning one, they have to ship it from one to the other, two, they have to hold the product, three, they're gonna mark the product up, and four, they're gonna handle it. And all these things mean the flower is older and more beat up and more expensive than it needs to be. And it's just the way the industry evolved. This is no one's fault. This is just the way things happen. Um, and so what you have is five different players sharing the margin, which means a really expensive retail price, the $84. You have 50% waste. Literally half of the stems that leave the farm die without ever being monetized. That means huge economic and environmental waste. No one's happy about that. By the time they get to the florist, it's been two weeks. So your local florist shop is sitting on flowers that are two weeks dead. Right? What you're all used to seeing in a flower is a flower that's almost at the end of its life. It looks perfect, but literally the next day it's dead, right? If you see a flower when it's a little baby, I mean, I got babies, I got three babies, they don't come out pretty, <laughs> right? It's not, it's not awesome, <laughs> but it's got a long life ahead of it, right? The weird thing about flowers, they look their best right before the dawn, or sorry, right before the dusk, it's all over. Um, and so you have this really weird thing where florists get old product, and you say, hey, give me your freshest stuff, and the freshest they can give you is two weeks old. That's an old product. And then by the time it gets to you, because they all have to manage their own inventory, it's 17 or 18 days old, and flowers generally last about three weeks. And this is why when you spend 70, 80, 90 dollars at my big named competitors, they last three days, and you just drop 30 dollars per day of enjoyment, which is a bad outcome. No one wants to send a product that lasts literally three days for 90 bucks. It doesn't feel good. And then the last piece is that you have no transparency of source. So every step along the way here, these flowers from good farms and bad farms are being mixed together. Good farms are farms that use organic means of pesticides. They use natural predators as pesticides. They don't cut down the rainforest. They don't use red label chemicals. They don't use child labor or slave labor, or all these things that you and I as consumers don't want to support. The problem is, is because the flowers go from the farm to the importer to the wholesaler to the local florist and then they're sold by 100 flowers in FTD, there's no traceability as to where it came from because flowers from good farms and bad farms are being pulled together and they're being mixed up. So who here is married? Raise your hand. And I hate doing this, but I have to do it because education is important. All of you had flowers picked by a child or that damaged the earth permanently at your wedding and so did I. My co-founder said, hey, where'd you get these flowers? I said, I don't know, the local florist. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm still here, but brother, like, you're supporting the wrong people. But this is an industry where no one talks about it. We talk about it a lot in food. Where's my organic food? Where's my uh, free-range chicken? Right? But for some reason, in flowers, it's just ignored. And so when we, when we rip out all these layers that really obfuscate the source, we can actually know where the flowers come from, and therefore we can feel good about it.